you hadn't been living on Mulberry Street at the time, you'd hardly believe that it ever happened. We're just ordinary folks on Mulberry Street. We stop and talk to each other on the way home in the evening. Ask about the kids. Find out how the ball game came out. That sort of thing. If somebody on our street gets a new car or anything, we all get excited about it. You know how it is when anybody gets a new car. The fellow who gets it thinks it's the best car in the world. He's got to tell you everything the salesman told him. It's got power, economy, speed, and especially safety. Steel top, welded frame. Oh, there must be dozens of safety features. Feather touch brakes, safety glass, unbreakable steering wheel, smooth dash, nothing jutting out to bump against. It's got everything. On a lot of streets, maybe there wouldn't be so much talk about safety. But there is on our street, because we're safety conscious. If you hadn't been there, you'd hardly believe how it happened. The kids on our street are like kids anywhere else. They think of one thing at a time. Jimmy Evers on this particular day thought he'd like to buy a cap pistol. Now Jimmy, who has had a lot of experience in such things, didn't ask his mother for the money. He asked if he could take the empty pop bottles back to the store and use the refund money. He loaded himself with as many as he could possibly carry, and then some. It was quite a mess. Jimmy picked up the ones that weren't broken and went on about his business. About 10 minutes later, Sam Meister was driving along our street. He saw the glass and pulled over to the curb. He was going to pick it up before somebody got hurt. But just as he got out of his car, another car was coming down the street. Sam tried to get the driver to stop, but... The car came to a stop in Baylor's driveway with little Bobby Baylor's tricycle twisted under the wheel. Bobby wasn't on it then, but he had been just a minute before. Well, it gave us all quite a scare, I'll tell you. You know how it is after a thing like that. You keep talking about it. Everybody says it could have been worse, and that leads to talk about close calls. The closest I ever came to getting it was on the count of a blowout. I had a lot of trouble stopping the car, too, but I managed that all right. It happened while I was changing the tire. It was the left rear. I had pulled over, but the wheel was still on the road. I guess the guy didn't see me. Well, if he'd have been a foot closer, I just wouldn't be here. Not long after that, I read where several thousand people were killed or injured exactly like that last year. The thing that worries me is, what would Alice do if she had tire trouble when she's out in the country coming home from her mother's? You know, all this talk reminds me. Maybe I ought to have my right rear tire looked at. Bumped a curb pretty hard the other day. Could have broken the cord and it might be chafing through the tube. Jerry Lake didn't say anything, but I knew what he was thinking. Just yesterday he was bragging about driving 150 miles in a little under three hours. While all that was going on, Bob Davis was taking it all in and grinning like a Cheshire cat. The next thing we knew, he was laughing as though we'd been swapping funny stories. Say, listen, you calamity howlers. Why don't you keep up with modern improvements? Come on over here. I've got something to show you. We followed him over to his car. He didn't say anything, but just took a nail and hammer and a pair of pliers out of the trunk. None of us knew what was going on and Bob didn't explain. He just put the nail up against the tire, and for the first thing we knew, he was driving it into the tire. We just looked on dumbfounded. We thought he was nuts. Bob didn't explain either. He just took the pliers and pulled out the nail. Come on, we gotta fix that puncture. Get in. Well, 
When you see a fella drive a nail into a tire and then pull it out without getting a flat, you just naturally get curious. So he got in. He drove around the block a couple of times. The tire wasn't flat. Didn't even seem to have lost any air. Bob pulled up after a while and announced smugly that the tube had repaired itself while we were riding, and now the tube was just as good as new. Well, we'd had all we wanted of the magic tricks. Now it was time to explain. I figured you fellas would want to know all the answers. That's why I stopped here. Come on, I want you to meet a friend of mine. Joe Pearson, the cyberling dealer in our neighborhood, he was the fellow Bob wanted us to meet, got quite a kick out of Bob's explanation of why we were there, and he offered to clear up the mystery. He took a little tool out of his pocket and said, Now, just to show you that we aren't pulling any tricks, I want to give you a little demonstration. This tool is about the size of a 20-penny nail. It has a hollow shaft and a valve that makes it possible to open or close the hole in the shaft. Now, here's a tire with a sealed air tube, the same kind Bob has. Now watch. The point is well into the tube. To prove it... Now, watch what happens when I pull it out. The tube seals itself. I'll tell you about that in a minute. First, though, there's something else I want to show you. We've been conducting tests with the sealed air tube. This tire got 872 punctures in a road demonstration, but the sealed air tube never went flat, lost practically no air. Now, here is the tube. I want you to look closely at the places where it was punctured. Notice these rubber rivets on the outside surface. Wherever you see one, there was a puncture. The Cyberling sealed air tube is probably the greatest advance in tube design since tubes have been invented. It was proved during the war as a bulletproof tube when it was used on thousands of combat vehicles and stood up even under 50 caliber machine gun fire. The secret lies in a gummy rubber compound that remains plastic throughout the life of the tube. This compound is held in place by a series of bulkheads, or tubular containers, which run around the inside of the tube. Now let's see what happens when your tire strikes a nail or some similar object. Joe took a 20-penny nail, placed the point of it against the wall of the tube, and pushed it in slowly. Inside the tube, if you look closely, you can see that the gummy rubber compound adheres to the nail, forming an airtight seal. Now, when the nail is withdrawn, notice what happens. The compound goes the other way, still clinging to the nail. As the object is removed, the sealing compound is drawn into the hole, and a tiny rubber rivet is left on the outer surface of the tube. As the car is driven, this rivet makes a permanent air seal. You mean the puncture did no damage, whatever? Right. The torture tire had 872 such punctures, but the tube is just as good as ever. Now, suppose your tire runs over a sharp object or bumps a curb hard enough to split or cut the casing. Here. Here's an actual case. Notice how this tire has been cut, and still the tube didn't burst. Now, in time, a cut like that will chafe through the tube wall, and then what happens? Well, here's a case like that. The compound has oozed out to the surface and sealed the brake. Still no blowout, and plenty of warning that the tire needs attention. Here are some photographs we took during the torture tests. Say, if you fellows are really interested, I'll put on a test for you, right on Mulberry Street. 
The next day, we all gathered on Mulberry Street to watch the torture test. Joe had rigged up a board filled with nails. Take a good look at those nails, fellas. Good, sharp ones, right from Miller's hardware store. We knew, of course, that Joe intended to drive over those nails, but we still looked at each other a bit skeptically. We gathered at the curb. Joe walked back to his car, got in, started it, then pulled forward slowly. Nobody said anything. I guess we were waiting to hear that tire pop. Well, you gotta believe your own eyes. Those nails bit deep into every part of the tire, but the sealed air tube took it as though nothing had happened. Joe never does things by halves. He backed the car up and started a second run, just to make sure he'd use up all the nails, I guess. He did a good job of it, all right. I remember thinking you wouldn't pick up that many nails in a million miles of normal driving. Well, anyhow, half a million. Joe seemed quite pleased with the results of the test. He took the wheel off so he could get a closer look. There you are, fellas. Plenty of nails right through the tube. Still no loss of air. In my book, that's performance. Any wonder I'm a little proud of these sealed air tubes? Joe still had something else up his sleeve to show us. Something even more incredible. He had welded a set of knife blades to a steel plate. They were pointed and plenty sharp. They'd make a good inch and a quarter cut in any tire. He put the knives down, and for good measure, he added a pile of broken bottles, just like the one that had started the whole thing. Then Joe motioned his assistant to bring up the truck. Believe it or not, he drove those tires right over the knives and the glass. First the front wheel, then the back. The tires didn't even lose any air. The truck kept right on going and we figured we'd seen a miracle on Mulberry Street. There are several so-called puncture-proof tubes on the market, but only Cyberling has these patented bulkheads. You see, if it weren't for these bulkheads holding the plastic rubber compound in place, it would all be thrown to the center at high speeds, and when the car is parked, it would all settle to the bottom of the tube and throw the wheel out of balance. And that same thing can happen with any tube that lacks these bulkheads. Bulkheading is an exclusive patented feature found only in Cyberling sealed air tubes. Well, by that time, we were convinced those sealed air tubes were the thing, all right. But Ray popped the big question. Looks pretty good, Joe, but how much do they cost? Before I answer that, I want to show you something. Here's the best salesman I have, outside of the tube itself. Now, you see this tire? Ruined because of underinflation. There's plenty of tread left, but look what's happened on the inside. Now, with sealed air tubes, that won't happen, because sealed air means exactly what it says. The air stays in. There's no need to check the pressure as often as with ordinary tubes. That means longer tire wear. Not only that, but sealed air tubes will outlast three or four sets of tires. We have records to show that sealed air tubes have been used for 200,000 miles and more, and in set after set of tires for over 10 years. When you figure the savings from both those factors and figure out what it's worth to you to have safe tubes on your car, well, they don't cost a whole lot more than old-fashioned tubes, but they're worth, well, you put a price on safety. Yes, we're just ordinary folks on Mulberry Street. We don't have too much money to spend on luxuries and fancy things, but we do have a sense of values. Yes, we have a sense of values, but we wouldn't know what kind of price tag to put on safety.